Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're not going to be talking about news per se. We're going to be talking more about the trailers that have come out and not your just superhero stuff. We're going to be talking about Thor Love and Thunder, uh, well, the other ones, Brian, MI7, The Gray Man, a movie that I've been looking forward to seeing. A lot of good stuff to discuss there. Um, and the possible Black Panther uh, trailer that's supposed to be coming out how soon? Black Adam. Oh, Black Adam, sorry. And the possible <laughs> Black Adam trailer that um, he 8th. announced that today, right? June yeah, 8th. June 8th, yeah. Let's leave that for last. Yeah. That's... But let's let's start off with Thor Love and Thunder. We got the second half of that uh, initial trailer that they revealed a few weeks ago. And Brian is as we thought it would be. You know, they showed us Gore, the God Butch. And what did you think mm -hmm. of his uh, appearance? Surprisingly comics accurate. That was my first reaction was that like between Christian Bale doing another yet another physique transformation, he's yeah. very gaunt. You know, he's kind of a lot closer to his machinist rescue Don physique than he is his original Bruce Wayne physique. But yeah, the, the, the costuming and the and the and the coloration and the and the wardrobe and even down to the necro sword, he looks pretty darn like the way Gore is drawn in, in the comics, except for a little bit of change to the face, because you can't totally hide Christian Bale's face behind fangs and stuff like that. But yeah. no, he, he looks properly he looks properly menacing. Um, and uh, he seems pretty fearsome, at least in the little bit that that we saw. So I was, I was, we've been waiting. They kept it under wraps, but I, it definitely made me want to see more of the performance. I think it's going to be a hell of a performance, Brian, because I think Kristen Bell understands that it just can't be him performing, uh, you know, this villain and looking him up. I think he's going to pull out a, an emotional performance um similar i would say similar to not an american cycle but there's going to be a lot of weird uh emotion when he speaks because he, this is a guy that's saying all the gods need to die and he's going to go after him and kill him this is a serious th individual he has to feel really strong <laughs> to go about about that mission, Brian. Well, so I'm I think he's going to give us a good performance. I'm curious to see whether we get his origin, right? So the origin of why he feels that way in the comics is his own family. Yes. Is killed and he finds out that basically the gods, you know, in theory had the power to prevent it and did not. And that's the the driving force of his never ending hatred of them. So I, I hope we see that. I hope we see the moment that gives him that gives us as an audience that investment in what he's trying to do. Um, I hope they can make us empathize with him a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. Because if that doesn't work, then this is this is well, then he's more one note, right? Like if that's the yeah. case, then he's much more just like a killing machine. And that's a little bit one more one dimensional and harder even for him to give a real balance to Chris Hemsworth and and Natalie Portman, but he, I mean, he looks great. I mean, the sword. I'm glad the sword is in it. That's a key avatar, our key. I'm um, sorry, MacGuffin. You know, generally mm -hmm. in, in the comics. So, be curious to see if that sword outlasts this story um, in some way. But mm -hmm. you know, and the fight scene. Look, the fight scene looks cool. The one that's teased at the end. We all, I want the, the black and white. Mm -hmm. the, the fight that's in black and white. That looks pretty cool. Um, and, and who's who was in the shot? Thor and, and was it Th him and Thor? It's him, Thor. It looked like him, Thor, Natalie Portman, Thor. Okay. And even maybe um, Valkyrie are all fighting in that black and white motif against him. There's a couple of quick cuts in there. I couldn't tell if it were, they were showing Jane Foster again or where they were showing Tessa Thompson delivering like a kick or something that's in the black and white, but yeah. 
we said previously that uh, there is a, I think, I still think, I'm still sticking to it, that Natalie Portman, Portman's character is going to be kaput. Do you still believe that? Yeah, I think there's a real, I think there's a real chance of that. Yeah, I do. Um, we've been, you sent me a text, Brian, and it was rumors about what this movie um, may be tonally. Mm. Uh, and one of the things that you and I, Brian, have agreed on with, um, you know, with Ragnarok and our concern that Taika Waititi may take it a little bit further into the goofy world. There seems to be that possibility that that is, there's a little bit more of that, Brian. How does that make you? feel do you believe that that is a is a i mean i'm quite certain we think that is a possibility that we may go into goofiness but is that a big concern for you because we've said that this could be marvel's best movie what are your thoughts on do you still believe that or what are your thoughts on the whole situation yeah so the, the source on that is matt bellany at the puck um on his podcast mentioned that his sources had told him the, sh the summary, the tagline for Love and Thunder is not quite as good as Ragnarok, a lot more Taika. And that has me a little concerned. I think my formula for this being the best movie it could possibly be and the best, maybe the, one of the best movies Marvel has made is actually that it be maybe 10 to 15% less Taika and more emotionally weighty than what we got in Ragnarok. So the trailer clearly gives you, you know, Ravager Thor as a rocker. You know, there's definitely humor with um, Borg and Meek. Uh, there's definitely even a little bit of humor in sort of the, the some of the other character interactions. So you know that the humor is not going, the Taika silliness is not going to go away. That's not really my expectation. And the full trailer, kind of gives you a little more of that. Like Russell Crowe kind of seems a little bit like a buffoon as Zeus. I don't know what your thought was. Like when he says that one line, which basically strips Hemsworth of his clothing, he doesn't really have like a commanding godlike presence. He's more of like a com com comic relief type of line delivery. So that makes me a little nervous that like, if we are going to get Hercules, gosh, I hope Hercules is not a, a clown, you know? like a muscle bound clown, that would be kind of disappointing. Yeah. But, you know, I think if this movie is, hey, Marvel had a lot of success with Ragnarok and basically gave Taika Waititi the keys and told him to do whatever he wanted. And he comes back with something that's a level up in the silliness. I think that's not going to be as well received. That's my prediction. No, I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 100%. Um, because it's like when you think about what Thor has lost, and we've had this debate before. Thor has lost a lot. Wanda lost some stuff. Black. A lot of people lost a lot, but Thor probably lost the most. And I want to see that transition. I want to see that emotional weight uh, for his character. And, you know, him being, going back to what he used to be, but certainly a changed man. But I, I, we'll see, man. We'll, let's see what, what happens with, with Thor Love and Thunder. That comes out in how long? Comes out in July. Um, comes out okay. in July. I, I did want to, I did want to continue to sing the praises of the visuals, though. I really think this looks like a great movie. I really, yeah. the full trailer, I think, gave you a little more of Olympus, which I think Olympus looks super sharp and cool yeah, and, yeah. Fine and original. Um, I think the costuming looks pretty good on this. Like, I think Natalie Portman in the costume looks great. Like, I'm much yeah. better than I would have thought possible. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, it's working. Like I would have said like that would have been a tough one for me, but it's working. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Gore looks really menacing, looks imposing. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'm, 
I do think this movie looks really tight. I mean, Marvel sometimes with the effects and the CGI, you get a little bit of a mixed bag. And this mm -hmm. one looks like they hit it on the screws because um, everything looks really, really nice. And like I said, that that I'm assuming that black and white action scene might be the climactic battle that we're getting a, a taste of, but mm -hmm. it looks really sharp. I love the contrast. And then you see the lightning has color. And I'm like, this is original. Like I, I like okay. what they're doing. Like, so those ideas I think are are, you know, have me have me optimistic. But yeah, when I heard when I when I heard that statement from Bellany, I was like, uh oh, you know, is this gonna be, I don't know what the like would guardians of the galaxy volume two be a good analogy where it was sort of like guardians of the galaxy one was fresh and awesome and then there's like a little more james it's like james gunn turned up a little bit more in volume two and like volume two just isn't as good as volume one even though yeah. it's still kind of a decent ride and enjoyable so i hope it's not that um and like you said there's to the point about lost gore even says it in the trailer you're different than all the other gods i killed because you have something to lose you know, he basically yeah. tells him that. So he's acknowledging that. It's just some of this stuff I'm struggling to, between that and like Jane Foster's cancer and her potential death. Like, how can you, you can't make light of that, can you? Like, you can't, you can't just poke fun at that. That's not, yeah. that doesn't seem right to me, but. Um, I wanted to ask you this before we moved on to the next trailer. What does... Because I, I don't know who, if it was a director or someone else, but one of them uh, associated with the film said that Gore may possibly be the best villain. That's Taika. Taika said that. Okay, Taika. Brian, let's say, let's say if, let's say this is true, which I don't think Christian Bale makes it out of this movie. I, at least I don't think. I, I think we can. I can speak for both of us saying that Thanos is probably the best villain in the MCU. Correct. Yeah, is that even a debate? I'm yeah. trying to think. I don't yeah. think that's. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably How... what, Thanos. It's probably Thanos, Loki, Killmonger. No. I'd probably put the. I'd probably put um, Wen Wu. I mean, that's. It's not a. It's not a long list of great villains, yeah. right? No. That Marvel yeah. had. So yeah. So, what would Gore need to be to surpass this the the, the Thanos's um, uh, I guess um, title as best villain? I, I I think for me personally, I think this is just one movie. He can be a great villain, but the best in one outing that is it's, that's tough to pull off. What are your thoughts? I'm, I'm I'm skeptical for the reason you said. I mean, the Thanos had the arc of Thanos alone over multiple pictures gives him a huge advantage in, in any discussion here. But the reason it's hard to surpass him is Infinity War. I mean, Infinity War is a Thanos movie at its yeah. core. That's the yeah. and and over the course of that movie, you you develop a real understanding of his twisted, but in his mind, noble motivation to improve the universe and yeah. what he's lost along the way and sacrificed to get there. That's not an easy thing to to pull off. So I think yeah. that makes it, you know, very tough for for so for Gore and one outing to beat that, you would kind of need like you would almost have to port something like the Heath Ledger Joker performance into a character nobody's seen before. And even yeah. Ledger, as great as he was, part of what made that performance so special was that people have notions of the Joker, right? The Joker is sort of a known like a known entity yeah. to people. Whereas Gore the God Butcher has no, no one has any attachment to that. So this, this is all Christian Bale introducing you to this. So he's really got to make you believe in this character in two hours. Uh, and by the way, you mentioned he's not going to make it out of this movie. He is immortal in the comics. So I am curious to see how they, they deal with that. He is not killable technically in the okay. actual story. So they would have to change something about his origin. Okay. to make him truly you know able to be destroyed permanently yeah yeah let's see man let's see let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of uh the thor 11 thunder trailer the second half of that and uh 
Uh, do you guys have any concern concerns about the movie being probably a little bit too goofy? Let us know. Um, MI7, Brian. We are the you... gold standards. You <laughs> should have put that in the trailer. <laughs> I thought the last Mission Impossible movie was that year and for quite some time, perhaps one of the best acting films I've seen in quite some time. Agreed, 100%. Um, this movie seems to probably take us back to that conversation again. Um, I usually don't really know what's going on in an MI movie. I just go see it because I know I'm going to get some action, some good stunts, some cool things to see. I don't know what's going on until I see the movie. Um, what do you think, Brian? Uh, 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 what did you think of the trailer? I think the trailer is great. I mean, this franchise to me more than any other understands perfectly what it is and what it needs to accomplish to be successful. Uh, and this trailer to me is that in microcosm. It's like, yeah. we need to show you original, death-defying, impossible stunts and set pieces. Great. We have a train flying through the air <laughs> and they're a locomotive train flying through the air and they're somehow cavorting and doing things and stunt work on that. We have Tom Cruise apparently nose diving into a canyon and with no intent of opening his parachute, <laughs> uh, a stunt we've heard a lot of things about. Yeah, uh, we apparently are going to have some kind of set piece on horseback, which is a new one for the franchise in the okay. desert. Um, okay, right. I mean, so I feel like this, and I feel so. I feel like the franchise, and we're going to be in super cool locations, which you always are. There's always a great array of cities that they go visit and look out. So this movie understands all that. It gives you all that in two minutes in the trailer. Things that I will say, I am excited about. And I noticed. Uh, shout out to one of my favorite, like that guy, 90s franchise guys, Henry Zerny, who was both Robert Ritter in Clear and Present Danger, and then was Kittrich, the kind of like seemingly evil, but then at the end turned good, sort of um, IMF handler uh, in the first Mission Impossible movie. He's the guy in the beginning ah, of yes, the yes, trailer yes, 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 talking yes, the yes. cruise, and I'm like, I love that guy. He's so sinister. He's he, he his delivery of lines is so perfect. I love that he's back. Um, so I'm excited to see whatever small part he has to play. This yeah. movie also, to me, I don't. You're, this movie seems very strong for female characters. I don't know if you noticed this. So Rebecca Ferguson is back. We know that. Um, Vanessa Kirby is back as the White Widow. Saw her. But then we add Haley Atwell. Looks like she, you know, she's like the major new female lead add to this movie. Looks like she has a lot to do. Don't know if, and, and the, Google the quotes on her character because it's hilarious. They're like, we don't know if she's good. We don't know if she's bad. I think Haley Atwell even herself said, I don't even know what this character is. I'm just kind of going with it. Like, um, and then you also have, I'm going to butcher just her reading name, the lines. Tom Clementieff, who played Mantis in the Avengers series, is also briefly shown as as a blonde assassin of some kind. So you, this movie seems to be very heavy relative to prior missions in terms of female star power, which I'll be interested to see. And it also, the obvious one, it's a part one. We've never, these movies have started to connect a little more with the recent outings, like Rogue Nation fed into Fallout, right? That was the repercussions of Rogue Nation. But mm -hmm. we've never actually had a, two-parter and we've got a direct cliffhanger into a second part so i'm curious to see how that is played and executed um but one thing that i think has worked to this movie's advantage is the delays mm -hmm. uh the gap we're now going to be five years removed from fallout when this movie comes out i think people will be really really ready for a new mission when this yeah. hits and that's going to yeah. feed, I think, really big box office for, for Cruz again. Yeah. He's killing it, this guy. He's almost 60. Like, and this dude made Top Gun at 86. <laughs> <laughs> How many actors can lay claim to the fact that they can be a credible leading action actor 
literally long, yeah. 40 years after they first did it. Yeah. Yeah. That dude is a machine and he is the ultimate pro at this. Um, and it's good for him, man. Good for him because uh, he really cares about the movies. Um, and bringing that movie experience to the theaters and to fans. Um, and he really wants to, he really wants to make sure that what he does, people enjoy. And you so, have to appreciate that. Yeah, and he still and like you know, he still has so much power. So I was listening to actually Joseph Kaczynski, who directs Top Gun Maverick, talk about how he got the job. And so, because Top Gun, what became Top Gun Maverick, that movie was greenlit in 2010. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that in 2022. And Kaczynski said he went in to pitch his idea to Cruz and Bruckheimer. And he said, literally at the end of the pitch, Cruz picked up his phone, called the head of Paramount and said, we're making the movie. And that was it. Movie got made. <laughs> like, and he's like, how many people in Hollywood can still do that today where they can literally call a studio head and say, this is happening, whether you like it or not, this is yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. still probably one of like five people that could do that. Who's the other? The Rock? Rock is one for sure at a certain level, definitely could. Um, I would say some of the others are probably directors, right? Steven Spielberg can do it for sure. No, no, Nolan. Nolan can do it for sure, right? It's mostly, but in terms of actors, yeah, Cruz is Cruz and The Rock. I don't know who else would actually have that kind of single-handed power to maybe even Clooney. I don't think to that budget level, though. I mean, you're talking about two hundred yeah. million dollar budget, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, like, yeah. I, I think the the list is really short for like yeah, any yeah. kind of movie. I'm saying like. You know, like Vin Diesel, it's obviously fast movies, sure, but outside of that, no. Like yeah. you know, yeah, Cruz might be the, he might be the last he might be the last unicorn of that like era of Hollywood when it really was the star who drove everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys uh, think about the MI Seven trailer. And I didn't know that it was a part one. So they're really, A, they built the universe with MI7 because they keep on bringing the same characters, right? And uh, doing this part one, I think equals, especially if this is a good movie in the cliff, if this is dope, Brian, then you, got to expect over a billion dollars easy for mi8 eight. part two i'm, I'm yeah. with you i'm with you i also want to i'm going to make a prediction here so there are a lot of reports that paramount plus which pablo i've been i've been spending a lot of time on paramount plus lately i'm just going to tell you there's good <laughs> stuff on there i'm having a good time with what i'm watching okay okay um there's a lot of rumors that tom cruise is single-handedly when we talk about star power blocking paramount from putting What's a Mission thing? Impossible TV series together on Paramount Plus. But I'm gonna make a prediction. If Dead Reckoning Part Two is in fact the grand finale of Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible film franchise, they will leverage characters and pieces out of that movie and he will produce the Paramount Plus Mission Impossible series after those movies are done. And I predict as he gets older, you might even see him be like the handler, like almost like the Alec Baldwin character was like, he won't be the star of that series because he's still a movie star, but he'll pop up as like a cameo organizing the team or organizing the IMF. And that show could be huge if he allows that to happen after these films are done. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm predicting that's coming after this. That is, that sounds like it's a plan. That sounds like it's a plan. Well, let's see if it comes to fruition. Um, but uh, what's next? Um, the Gray hey, man. man. Brian, I had not seen the trailer till today. I've been wanting to see it, I've been meaning to see it, see it but I haven't had the opportunity. And today I saw it before we did the show. I was like, let me watch it. And, um, 
the Russos to me, they've won my faith in whatever they do for me to give it a shot and watch. Um, I saw extradition, uh, extraction. I enjoyed myself watching that movie. Um, the reason why I'm, one of the reasons why I'm excited for this, uh, this film is because he has some great casts. Yeah. Um, you got Chris Evans. Be as a bad guy. See. Yeah, as a bad the guy. bad guy, which he doesn't norm ever do. Yeah. Exactly. So this is one of those uh, John Travolta moments where I think Face Off was his first Face bad off. guy. For, yeah, yeah, so he was, he was good in that movie. Yeah, yeah so we're going to see Chris Evans, and we see a little bit of that in Actually, the, the trailer. I got to correct you, though. He was the bad guy in Broken Arrow before he was the bad guy. Ah, yes. And I, still liked him, and I still like him. Both in that for too. John Woo. Both for John Woo, but yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro, Broken Arrow. That, wow, that took me back. Um, and what's the other guy's name? Ryan Gosling, man, he does Ryan, not yeah. do action. He does not do a lot of action. Drive was dope. It was. That's a. That's what I'm saying. That's like probably the most. I mean, Drive and Blade Runner are probably the most action oriented films he's done. Yes. Loved him in Crazy Stupid uh, Love. Um, he had. I think his inspiration for that um, role came from J George Clooney. He was George Clooney-ish in that um, in that role, um, and again, the fact that J the Russo brothers are doing this film and they're, I think, visually and their the way they tell a story and the action sequences that they put together, um, this is going to be a very interesting movie for me, and I'm very excited to see it when it does come out. Um, and I thought the trailer represented a good time and seeing some actors do something different. One who hasn't done something in a while and is going to be in an action film that looks cool and that the Russo brothers are doing. And Chris Evans, the consummate good guy, being bad guy, how he's going to play that role as well. So there's a lot of good things to look forward to. What did you think of the trailer? I was getting serious echoes of Winter Soldier. I just yeah, thought right? that some of the I didn't want to say that. Yeah, but I didn't mean it. I don't mean that it's going to be as good as I just meant the set piece design yeah. and like yeah. some of the hand to hand combat and the gunplay to me was very reminiscent of like the chase pacing of, of that movie. And I, I think that's a compliment. It made me excited to to see it. And I thought I was fascinated to see Gosling as like, you know, kind of a John McClane type of hero. And he looks Incredible. He looks great. I, mean, I thought he looked like he's when he's running and avoiding the explosion. I'm like, yeah, I believe it. Like I haven't yeah. seen him do it before, but like he, yeah. he works for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then Evans is sort of like a you know very sure of himself, wisecracking bad bad guy. I was like, yeah, I, I'm 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 interested to see more. Um, and the movies kind of got that snappy dialogue that I think the Russos made work in some of the cap cap movies as well. So. I think for me though, the big question I have for you is so this Netflix is definitely playing around a little bit with this movie. If you notice at the end, this movie is being sent to the theater. Yes. Similar to the Zack Snyder um, Army of the Dead movie. Did this trailer do enough to get you to go to the theater no. to see it the week before? That's, that's, that's an interesting question. It at least made me think about it. My gut is I'm not gonna go to the theater. But I will say, like, I think this movie probably had to show you a bit more to sell you on it. So you probably saw more of the action than you probably would otherwise want to see. But I'm curious to see if it's big enough in its scale, the way it looks, to get some people to go out and see it on a big screen. I, I think the only way you get people to see it on, the, on a big screen is if it's only being released on, in the theaters. And the, the fact that I'm going to be able to see it when it comes out on Netflix. You're just going to wait. Yeah. 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 If you give me that option, most likely I may take that option. I'm not gonna wait to go to the theaters to see it. Most likely I'll just see it right there. Mm -hmm. Um, and probably see it in the theaters after I seen it from, from home, you know. Um, but yeah, um what do you, what do you think? Let's say they, they get a good turnout from movie theaters uh, for this movie? What do you think their, their aim is? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I, I was going to say, like, 
what we don't know is how many theaters is Netflix willing to put this in, right? So it's, I doubt it's going to be 4,000 the way you would do like a true blockbuster. Um, I doubt you'll get a lot of IMAX screens. So I'm kind of curious, like what, what would be good box office for one week of this movie? I, 10 million? Like it's not going to be high, but I'm curious to see like what would be in the middle of summer, a decent number for this movie. I, I'm going to say like it's 10, 10 to 15 million US. That, that would be my like just rough guess of what this could do but i do think it'll be one of the top 10 movies netflix has ever put out in terms of audience that it looks mm -hmm. like that to me i mean right now you got kind of like like let's put it this way i'm a lot more excited to see this than i was to see red notice and red notice was a top 10 netflix movie that i don't think was very good but I, listen that's my i mean so this should be one of the most watched movies netflix has posted Netflix has Netflix is experimenting, experimenting right now. They're not doing well. They need to change up things up. This movie has to succeed. This movie has to be good, right? If it's not good, then the reputation of Netflix putting out a lot of content and and, and garbage is going to remain, and it's going only going to get stronger until they put out consistently good stuff. Well, everything about this trailer too suggests they are trying to start a franchise and a universe here to me like just watching the way the story was laid out you got this mono a mono struggle like i think if this is well reviewed and is widely watched i'd be shocked if there wasn't a gray man two and three yeah. coming in the next couple of years so this is netflix trying to create ip yeah but they yeah. don't have it let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Gray Man trailer. Um, are you looking forward to seeing this uh, movie in the theaters if it's available to you or in the or from home? And would you have gone to see this movie if it was not on Netflix on the same day? Let us know in the comment section below. Finally, we're getting. Wait, did you say uh, finally or did you say yeah. finally? <laughs> That's what I meant. That's what I meant. We're finally getting a Black Adam trailer, official trailer, not the graphic design, whatever they put out the first time at the fandom. Not what we recently see, although we might make, we still may get some shots, but we're going to get a fully realized trailer from the mind of the rock because this doesn't go through without his say so. So this is his thing. Anything the rock is in, is in, he has a heavy influence over what gets put out. So, Brian. Does this, what are you most curious or excited about to see in this trailer? The superhero VFX, hands down. I, I think there's a good discussion here, not, not to be too lengthy about it, but I think there's a good discussion here about like, if you were the marketing department for this movie, what would you put in this trailer? And how much do you have to show to hook people. I think you have to show at least one shot or, or mini sequence of this superhero effect. I think that's something that has to be in this trailer to get people buzzing that like they have something visually that's new that we haven't seen before. Yeah, I think because we did read an article quite some time ago regarding um them playing around with his flying effects and that's something mm -hmm. brian that really doesn't typically uh, uh impress us because we've seen it all i would say in terms of flying abilities in movies there hasn't been that much of a difference or innovation visually when it comes to that effect or that ability in movies. So this, they, they've been working on this. So that's something to look forward to seeing. Would I put some of that? Yes, I would put some of that so that we could be like, oh, snap, this looks amazing. 
I went back and double checked. So the original Matrix, they did put some of the bullet time shots in the original teaser for the movie. And like, obviously knowing what we know now, we kind of wish we could unsee that so we could just be wowed by it in the theater. But at the time, they got to sell, they got to get you to the theater in the first place. So they gave you that shot where you're like, I have never seen that before. What is that in action, right? So that's what I think this movie has to give you a little bit of to stand apart from the rest of Marvel and DC. I think that's the number one thing for me. I hope we don't get a lot of posing. I hope we don't see The Rock. We're gonna see a lot of The Rock, I think. <laughs> but I hope, you know what I'm talking about? I hope that I don't see The Rock persona. Oh yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. The Rock playing The Rock is what you're, you're You don't want to yes. see that. I don't yeah. want to see that. And I think we might see that. And that's what concerns me a lot about this 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 movie. We're gonna get a lot a lot of him. And I just gonna I just feel like it's gonna be just one big ego thing, man. And that's what that's what really uh, concerns me, you know. I also want to see one thing. I thought they did that they did well in the little sizzle reel. Finally, that we got a fandom was was I did like the little shots we got of the supporting characters. I, I hope we get a little bit more of Doctor Fate, Hawkman, Adam Smasher. I think only Adam Smasher was doing something right in in the in the sizzle. He was, reel. He's coming he, through a yeah. building, right? And like Hawkman, we just see him unfurl his wings and then Dr. Fate, we just see. So I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of like, just tease us a bit with them doing something. Yeah. Um, that would be nice. And then I, I don't, I'm guessing this trailer will not give you much in terms of the story. Like in the sense of like Black Adam has to be set up as both villain and hero, right? In certain ways. So like, I, I don't know this trailer will... Well, maybe it'll service one over the other. I'm guessing you won't get a clear sense of like exactly what the end game is or like what the mission ultimately becomes. Mm -hmm. um, but because it, it's all all all, all he, it has been a, is about Black Adam, the Rock playing the Black Adam, and having these the Justice Society, and sh there hasn't been much told with regard to what this movie is going to be about. Only that the right. balance of powers are going to shift. <laughs> right, nothing about the story. That's what I say, the story. Because that's my thing is like, this movie seems to position Black Adam as the villain to start. But we know The Rock is not going to stay the 100% villain. That's not really what this character, the character is more of an anti-hero than, mm -hmm. than a true villain. So mm -hmm. then who is he, if he's going to change sides in this movie, who's he fight? Who are they all fighting at the end as, as the JSA? Like, I can't. I can't imagine this trailer would give that away so soon. So I don't, I don't know. I kind of think it's going to be a lot of The Rock, a little bit of the JSA, and then I'm hoping for the VFX. And that's about it. I mean, I how much humor do you think is going to be in this trailer? Or do you think um, The Rock's going to go super dark, super edgy, kind of try I to think get I think it's going to be edgy. I don't know if it's going to go super dark. dark. I think there's going to be some hu humorous uh, moments. I'm gonna go out on a limb, Brian, and only because these guys are cool with each other. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say uh, Henry Cavill is gonna be Superman in this movie. I think so. Wow, that actually would be a pretty big deal if they keep oh, yeah. that on the wraps and it happened. Yeah. So that would elevate my interest, quite honestly. If he's in, if he's in the movie, yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Um, Although if they show that in the trailer, I won't forgive the marketing oh, yeah. department. Oh no, yeah, but that's the thing. Fire everybody, if they did that, you can't do that. You can't. You can't even. You can't even. Show, you can't do nothing that indicates that. Yeah, we just we just went through this with the Illuminati. If you do that with this movie, I will be so mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Any last words, Brian? Before we sign off. No, just that this was this was one of the bigger weeks for blockbuster trailer releases that we've had in in some time including some like in the case of mi7 that are still a year away so 
you know, adding Black Adam to the mix. I mean, at this point, Wakanda Forever is kind of, what, what else am I missing? Wakanda Forever is the last big, really big wild card. I mean, we didn't really talk about Jurassic World Dominion, but like, you know, pretty much every gigantic movie that we know is coming this year has now been, once Black Adam drops, has now been teased except for Wakanda Forever, I believe. I'm trying, I'm trying to think, I don't think there's any other like 200 million budget type movies that we will not have footage yeah. of at that point. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section, below, comment section below what you guys think of, uh, um, are you guys looking forward to the Black Adam trailer? Um, and there's a lot of rock fans, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people are excited to see the, um, this train finally again. Um, but let's see how it performs, man. This, this, this is, this is huge for the rock. This is huge for yes. the rock. It, ha it has, to, the it has to succeed. Yeah, it has to succeed. It has to get to a billion dollars. But uh, let us know in the conversation below. Does he even reach a billion dollars? Let us know. Uh, but that's our show. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell uh, and uh, share with your friends. And we'll see you next time on the Gen Report.